Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I have a little bit of an unboxing for you today. Um, so if you follow me on any social media, I think I posted on Twitter, um, Facebook, and Instagram, uh, I am buying gaming collections right now. If you guys are interested, I'm, I'm personally building up uh, mostly my Xbox 360 collection, a little bit of Xbox, a little bit of Xbox One, a uh, little bit of other systems, but mostly Xbox 360 is what I'm looking for. But I'm buying anything and everything, and that's a little bit, you know, you'll see a little bit of in anything and everything in this particular collection buyout. Uh, and I'll give a little bit more details on how that process works. If you're interested, if you've got a collection that you... Uh, that you might be wanting to part ways with, uh, you can reach out to me. Uh, my DMs are open on Twitter and Instagram, uh, so reach out to me there. Uh, link trees down in the description. It's got all my important links. But again, more information on how that process works uh, towards the end of the video. But for now, we're just going to go through this collection, and I'm going to show you guys everything that I got. And uh, yeah, so this one is for my buddy Tyler. Uh, Tyler is an artist. I've actually bought some art from him. Uh, in the past, if you guys, um, let's see, oh man, now I'm second guessing it. I'm pretty sure, I know a, f a few different talented artists uh, online, but I, I believe he's the one that made the Gravy Wheels logo. Um, if you guys listen to my podcast, the Gravy Wheels podcast, uh, he was the one that made that logo. And I've got like a, a Reptar from Rugrats and Charizard uh, and Gyarados paintings from him in my office in the house and they're amazing i love them very talented uh best god ever no sarcasm um very talented artist if you guys want to check him out all right so our first game here dang did he he bubble wrapped oh there's some like stacks so i guess he didn't bubble wrap each and every one but he wanted to make sure advanced warfare day zero edition was taken very well care of. So, uh, uh, fun fact, I have actually, I, I remember playing the multiplayer quite a bit on this one when it came out until everybody got good at the advanced movement and they would just like dash up and then to the side and stuff in the middle of firefights and I wasn't interested in that meta. I just want to shoot people, you know? So uh, that's when I stopped playing that. Let me move my uh, smoothie container there. So, anyways, moving on. Got a bunch of bubble wrap here. Let's see, I guess we'll just take this one on top. Got some 360 titles here, it looks like. Very uh, excited. Because again, I, and I'm gonna make a video here soon of my entire uh, basement. I, I've done like an entire man cave and I'm very excited uh, to show it to you guys. I know there's a lot of interest. I've had a couple pictures on social media and people are like, dude, have you done a tour yet? It's coming, it's coming. I've got like a full arcade man cave that I gotta show off to you guys, so. Here we go, we got Lara Croft Tomb Raider Anniversary. I think I've already got this one in my collection. I've been really wanting to go back and get uh, get into all these. There's so many Tomb Raider games and I've only touched like one or two of them. Um, I think I've already got this in my collection, but this is a really clean copy. So I might swipe this out, uh, swap out the copy that I already have and put that copy in my collection and sell the other one. Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. I don't normally get into the superhero games, but uh, we might might check that out. We'll see. Cabela's Dangerous Hunts 2009. I think this is the one I had. I mean, there were so many of these games, but I think this might be specifically the one that I played back in the day. And I've actually been kind of... I think, I think that's one of those games that if you go back, you're like, oh, this does not hold up to anything like I remember it. Uh, but I've been wanting to go back and check one of those out. So we've got Halo 3... You know, the classic. And it feels like it's still got the instruction manual. And, yeah. So if you fold this out, I don't know if you guys remember, but you actually get a little poster. Nice to see that that's still in there. So it is truly complete. There's something else back there, too. I don't remember. Oh, it looks like a Halo Wars advertisement. Let's see here. HaloWars.com, 2008. Very cool. Spiderwick Chronicles. I've seen this game before, but I don't know anything about it. Not going to lie. Looks like an RPG, which normally I don't play, but after uh, after uh, Hogwarts Legacy, I'm definitely more open to them. Beautiful Katamari. I own one of the Katamaris digitally, 
on the Xbox Series X, and it's fantastic. I've gotten, I think, I think I've beat everything except for the last level, and it's a lot of fun. I don't know if it's a port of this one or if this one's different. Um, but that'll probably stay in my collection. I don't think I have Katamari yet, a physical copy. Let's see. So if you haven't caught on, basically what I'm doing is when I buy out these collections um, from people that just, you know, don't play it anymore. I know how it is. Like you end up with a closet full of stuff that you haven't touched or even thought about in years. And eventually it's like, well, I'd rather have a little bit of cash and have my space back sometimes more importantly. Um, so what I'm doing is I buy out these collections and I keep everything that I'm interested in. Uh, and then I sell, I sell the games individually for the ones that I don't like a lot of the PS4 games I'll probably sell, you know, there's very few PlayStation games that I'm even interested in, but yeah, so that's basically what I'm doing. I, I, I keep the, the stuff that I'm interested in and then I sell the stuff that I'm not so interested in. So, uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, fun fact, I also have not played this campaign. In fact, the only time I played this game at all after the beta uh, was whenever I jokingly said that someone would have to donate $100 for me to play Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Or no, I think someone asked in the chat. They were like, how much to play Infinite Warfare for an hour? And I was like, 100 bucks." And then they donated 100 bucks, and I lost, you know, half that when I had to buy the game. <laughs> and then I had to sit there and play through the misery of that game's multiplayer. But yeah, I do plan on playing that campaign eventually. Call of Duty Ghosts, I recently played through the campaign of this. If you have not watched that Let's Play, I highly recommend doing it. There are 30-minute episodes-ish, I think, on my second channel, and I, I uploaded the entire, like, three, four-hour, uh, like, the entire uncut Let's Play on my main channel, so if you're interested in that. Great campaign. I don't think it's quite as good as um, MW3. I played MW3 just for context right before I played through Ghosts. MW3 is an absolutely fantastic campaign. Call of Duty Ghosts is really good, but I don't think it edges out MW3 quite yet. I think it's it's just under MW3 for me. It was, it was a fantastic campaign, but not quite as good as MW3. Two copies of Call of Duty Ghosts. We've got a beautiful GameStop. Uh, oh my god, three cop. Why did you have three copies of Call of Duty Ghosts? Tyler, what are we doing here? So MW2... With an extra copy of Ghosts, I guess. Cool. Another 360 game here. Earth Defense Force 2017. I already have two of these in my collection, but I'm not sure if this is one of them or not. Because I think there's like four, maybe five, of the Earth Defense games. Uh, I dabbled in one of them a little bit, and I think I played like the arcade mode or whatever, though, and it didn't really like suck me in. Um, so I don't know if I just need to try the actual story mode, but I, a lot of people swear that these games are fantastic and I keep thinking about them now that, uh, Helldivers 2 is going like viral. Those games just, Helldivers, Hell, Helldivers, right? Yeah. Helldivers 2 just very much reminds me of Earth Defense Force. And then we've got Sonic the Hedgehog on, uh, the Platinum Family Hits. I don't know why I'm checking the disc on like one of every seven of these. It's just a habit. Very cool. I don't... Yeah, I'm almost positive I've never played that. And I'm pretty sure I don't have it, so that'll probably go in the collection. I'm trying to, like... So I have a 10 and an 8-year-old son, and they're just now starting to get into gaming. Well, more so my 10-year-old. Uh, the other one doesn't... The 8-year-old the doesn't really seem to care as much, if at all. Uh, but I'm starting to build up... I just... I started realizing... I went back and played something. I don't remember what it was, and it made me realize how good Gen 7 was. Gen 7 is Xbox 360, PS3. That generation of gaming, there are so many good games. Like, j There's just been so many disappointing games from AAA Studios currently um, that when you go back and play some of these Gen 7 games, like, I don't know, man. They're, they're little diamonds in the rough. That's just before microtransactions took everything over and before seasonal content... And you've got a physical disc with an instruction booklet, and it just feels so good. And right now, Xbox 360 games are just so cheap. Uh, I really think they're going to blow up here soon. But anyways, I'm trying to build up like a huge library of all the good games on Xbox 360. So when my son grows up and he's like, you know, what should I play? I can be like, oh, this, 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 and this. You know, these are fantastic games. you got to play through them. I don't know. Uh, MW3 on PS3. Box has seen better days. 
fantastic campaign. I love that campaign. So good. From start to finish, action-packed, insane set pieces. I don't know how I didn't play through it until 2024, but that's what happened. Uh, PS3, what is this? This isn't even GameStop, is it? Trade in your games. Oh, Best Buy. See, I'm not familiar with like Best Buy packaging and stuff because I didn't have a Best Buy um, like close enough. Like The closest Best Buy was probably an hour or more away. Uh, so I didn't really grow up with that. So I've never, I didn't even know that they did pre-owned at, at Best Buy, if I'm being honest. Call of Duty Black Ops, the OG. What does that say? It's free $15 value. Five bonus maps. So does this come with one of the like first DLCs? Interesting. I wonder if that's on the disc or if there was like a code for it. Interesting. I don't know. Call of Duty Black Ops 2, the sequel. Look at that Nuketown 2025 flyer. Enter the code on the reverse side. Guessing that's already been entered. And that looks like that's it of the of the new school. Got some Game Boy games. Hey, speaking of Tyler's art, looky here. He slipped in. Slipped in some stickers. Let me get a nice close-up of those. Such a good artist. I'm I'm a big fan of what he does. Thank you very much, Tyler. I appreciate that. So let's go through these Game Boy games real quick. Game Boy Advance. We've got here, let me stand behind the camera so I can see if we're focused. Midnight Club Street Racing. Need for Speed. Porsche. Porsche. What's that say? Porsche. I can't read that. Whoops. Knocked the camera. Oh, God. Wobble. Hunt. Hunt. for Tune. Shaber? I, why can't I read that? I don't know. Uh, Final Fantasy Full Advance. Top Gun Combat Zones. Very nice. Game Boy games. I will keep... I'll probably keep a couple of these. Game Boy Advance games. I'm not big... I, I always try to get into mobile gaming, and I just really can't. I can't get into it. I don't know. SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Not the... I didn't know there was a Pirates of the Caribbean game that wasn't the Lego game. Interesting. And Grand Theft Auto. Pretty weird to see Grand Theft Auto on a, on a Game Boy cartridge. That big Rockstar logo. Pretty cool. So there are those. And then... Looky there, guys. You know what those are. Nintendo... 64 carts, baby. Now, the personal collector in me is a little um, undecided or, or torn or, I don't know, conflicted. That's what we'll say. Um, because I have a cart... That I bought off of uh, eBay or Amazon, I can't remember. But they sell a cart called, uh, and I don't even think I got the EverDrive. They have they have they have a cart called the EverDrive, but they have another one called I can't even remember. But basically, you buy this one Nintendo 64 cartridge, and it has a, a micro SD slot on it. And then you have, like, I literally bought this cart for, like, 50 bucks or something like that. And it has every single Nintendo 64 game on it. And then you can leave that in your Nintendo 64. A native, you know, unmodded Nintendo 64. You just pop that cart in your system and you never have to change out cartridges. You don't have to blow in the cartridges. You don't have to worry about scuffing up labels and ruining the value of your collection. I still have quite a few Nintendo 64 cartridges you know, um, the collector in me says, just, just keep all these in a closet for 50 years, you know, see what crazy number they're worth later. But, um, I don't know. I've got that cart, so I don't really need any Nintendo 64 games. And, uh, yeah, but I don't know. I really like collecting physical too. So let me know what you guys would do. Are you guys holding on to it onto any Nintendo 64 cartridges? Are you still playing them? Are you playing, uh, mo uh, emulators on your PC or what? Top Gear Overdrive. I don't think I've ever played that game. I, I see it quite often, but I don't think I've ever played it. Battle Zone, Rise of the Black Dogs. Looks like some sort of a tank game. I've never played that either. Um, one game that I did play similar to that was Battle Tanks. I don't know if you guys remember that one. 
Ridge Racer 64. NASCAR 2000. Quake 2. Very cool. I love seeing like Quake and Doom and stuff like that. I don't the like the first the absolute first first person shooters I ever played uh was, I think it was Doom, uh but then I, you know, started playing Quake and stuff too because it was just the the only ones that were really available back then and it was like on my uncle's computer. Load Runner 3D. Never played that one. Let me know if you guys have played any of these if they're winners or not. Got some sticky residue here, but we got Zelda, the Ocarina of Time. Fun fact that a lot of you guys are going to hate on me for. I've never played a Zelda game. Not one. Perfect Dark. Some say the better version of 007 Goldeneye. Command and Conquer. This one, this one's nostalgic to me. I had this one on my Nintendo 64 and I played way too much of it. Love Command and Conquer. Mario Tennis. I don't think I've ever played this one. Cruisin' Exotica. So there's like Cruisin' USA, Cruisin' Exotica. I think there's a few of these. Monster Truck Madness 64. There's some new Monster Truck games on the Xbox uh, that I play with the kids, and they're actually pretty fun. I might... I, and it's Rockstar? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to... Definitely going to have to try that one out. Didn't know that existed. Our Marines. Project Swarm. I don't think I've ever played that one. Bass Hunter 64. Very cool. Very plain label. It's weird they didn't even like... They didn't even throw a fish on there? What are we doing? South Park. Ah, this one's so good. If you guys have never played this, it's also on PlayStation. Um... Your four playable ca characters are Stan, Kyle, Kenny, and Cartman. Um, each one of them, uh, never mind. I don't. They don't, they have their own voice lines, but they they do have voice lines in the game, which makes the game hilarious. Um, and then it's a multiplayer game. It's four player, split screen, first person shooter in a South Park village in South Park. Um, you run around the map. You pick up weapons. There's like you can throw dodgeballs at each other snowballs you can pee on the snowballs and throw piss covered snowballs at each other there's uh trying to think i think there's like a terrence and philip doll that you throw at people and it might explode or something and like uh i remember like a nerf gun launcher and there's just all kinds of crazy stuff in this game a uh, nice little first person shooter i want so badly for them to remaster this and bring it to consoles and at least have couch co-op or not couch co-op but uh, couch split screen multiplayer or uh, even better you know like some some sort of online play would be amazing like who wouldn't play a south park first person shooter we do have that uh snow day coming out and it's kind of similar to that and if I, but not really at all either i don't know anyways body harvest that is just a really sweet label look at that like a bug eating a planet is that earth looks like earth Never played that one. Duke Nukem Zero Hour. I never got into the Duke Nukem games either. I played Quake. I played Doom. Um, never, never really tried Duke Nukem. Heard they're heard they're good. WWF No Mercy. Never really got into the uh, wrestling games either, unless I was over at a friend's house. I didn't have cable TV, so I couldn't watch wrestling. So I never really got into like the lore of it. But whenever I was over at friends, we definitely played racing, uh, uh, wrestling games. South Park Rally. I mean, this one speaks for itself. If you've never played South Park Rally, this is another one that you know. I really hope that. Uh, I mean, they're currently making games for the South Park franchise, so maybe we'll just get a new South Park Rally and not even a remaster. That would be even better. Um, but yeah, it's, it is what you think it is. It's a Mario Kart 64 ripoff essentially with, uh, South Park thrown in the mix. It's doesn't hold up as much as you'd like. It had a really weird. So like, I actually just played this a few weeks ago with some friends, um, four player split screen down in my basement. We, uh, we were playing it and we realized I forgot that there's not like a traditional lap system. You don't just go in laps. There's like a checkpoint system and they're just numbered and they don't really, I think they show up on your HUD, but it's like really hard to follow it. So imagine just like a few city blocks being the area that you're racing in, 
but you have free reign to turn down any street and there's like five or six different checkpoints and they're not really in like a in like a a lap pattern that makes sense and there's no like outline of that pattern you just have to like pay attention to the map and go from one to two to three it's really weird doesn't hold up as good as it as you'd want it to uh but again it's actually there's voice lines in it so just because it's in the south park world it is you know a little bit of fun and you can there's like um underpants gnomes and you can throw like a stripper doll on the screen and stuff it's wild Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey. Never really played any hockey games. Never, never really watched any hockey. Star, Star Fox 64. Fantastic game. Uh, fond memories of playing this more at the bowling alley. My parents would take me to the bowling alley and they had a, like the arcade that you sit in to play Star Fox. And I played a lot of that. But not, not as much on Nintendo 64. WCW NWO Revenge. We got Hulkster on there. That's... Is that Goldberg? Or is that Stone? That's not Stone Cold, right? That's Goldberg. I don't I'm going to guess Brett Michaels and Triple H. I don't know, guys. Like I said, I didn't really, I couldn't watch wrestling. We were too poor. We didn't have the channels. 007 Goldeneye. That is about, I mean, the label's intact, but, oh, I guess it is a little torn right there. That might be the dirtiest Goldeneye cartridge I've ever seen. Probably because it got used all the time in and out of a console bunch of kids all that good stuff but that's the fun part about buying out collections too is you get to clean all this stuff up you know whether i'm keeping it or selling it you got to clean it up um and that kind of brings me to the point look at that so thank you thank you very much uh to my dude tyler much appreciated man look at all that spread it out here like it's a thanksgiving feast or something uh thank you very much to my my man tyler let's see if i can get a zoom we get a zoom there we go we got a zoom baby so again thank you very much to tyler uh for selling me your collection much appreciated uh now for the details on buying collections if you guys are interested like i said my dms are open on both twitter and instagram um Shoot me a message. Shoot me pictures of what you've got. If you've got a price in mind that you'd like uh, for the collection, you know, go ahead and hit me with that. But typically what happens is you, uh, and I, I posted this once, like I said, on Instagram and stuff, and I had well over, I think, 20 people reach out with collections that they wanted to sell me from, you know, from a couple of games to a game and a system to a hun over 100, you know, games and just massive collections uh, basically what will happen is I will evaluate the collection. If you don't throw a number out at me, I'll evaluate, well, either way, I'll evaluate the collection, um, see what its value is. And here's the kicker that a lot of people don't seem to understand. If I evaluate your collection and it's worth $150, I can't offer you $150. If that were the case, I would just get on eBay and buy all your games one by one for market price, right? The point of buying out the collection is you getting all the work done at once. If you have to if you have to go on eBay yourself or you can take it to a local game shop if you still have one. Most local game shops are going to pay you like 50%, you know, some less. It, it all just depends on where you're at. My local game store they pay about 50% of market value. Um the point of me buying it out is it's all done in one transaction. I buy the postage for you, I send you the shipping label and you just print it out, put it on your box. And literally all you have to do is put the sticker on the box, take it to the post office, and then I'll send you your payment. So again, I'll evaluate your collection. I'll see what it's worth to me, market value. And then I'll make you an offer based on that amount. And if you accept that amount, then I'll have you box it all up, measure the box, weigh the box. If you have like a scale that you weigh yourself for like, you know, weight loss journeys or whatever, that works fine. Uh, just weigh it measure the box give me those dimensions and your address and then i will uh, purchase the shipping label for you so i pay for the shipping you don't have to worry about any of that you just pack it up print out the label slap it on the box take it to the post office once i get it i'll open it like i just did and verify that it's not just a bunch of old sports illustrated magazines or some rocks or whatever um you know i can't pay up front because then obviously you could just send me whatever you wanted and have my money so 
Uh, but once I verify the contents are what we made the deal on and nothing's like broken in half or, you know, m missing game discs and all the discs or, or all the cases or whatever, then I'll send you over the payment that we agreed on and uh, then we're good to go. Uh, but some people, some people seem to think, you know, oh, I have $150 worth of games. I want $150 worth of game, or I want $150. That's just, that's not how that works. First of all, if your collection's worth $150 and you go sell it on eBay tomorrow um, for $150, eBay, right off the top, they're going to take 15%. Then you have to ship that collection, right? I have ways of shipping stuff cheaper because I do it all the time for my multiple businesses. You, they're going to charge an arm and a leg. You know, shipping this collection would probably cost at least 15, 20 bucks, depending on where it's going and all that, obviously. And if you want to put insurance and stuff on that, stuff like that on it. So you're going to lose 15% right off the top from eBay. You're going to pay, you know, maybe 15, 20 dollars to ship it all out. So you're not going to get 150 dollars just because eBay says this is worth 150 dollars doesn't mean that's what you get to put in your pocket at the end of the day. So that right there um, takes some of the value down. And then obviously this is going to take me a lot of time, right? Whether or not I'm keeping it for my own collection or if I'm keeping half of it, selling half of it, whatever. I have to test every single one of these games. I have to clean up every single one of those cartridges. I have to, you know, take photos. If I'm listing it on eBay, you've got to take, you know, four or five photos of each game, list it, wait for it to sell. You know, there's a lot to it. It's not just like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, Hova scammed me. <laughs> Some people think that I'm just out there, whatever, you know, and, uh, but that's how the process works. And I just wanted to explain that for you guys. Um, and some people aren't really comfortable with the, you know, shipping it to me first and then me paying you later, but you know, is what it is. That's just kind of the way it has to go. Uh, I've got everything to lose. You can screenshot all my messages on Twitter or Instagram. If I, uh, if I just didn't pay you, you know, all you'd have to do is put those images out there and then I would lose my social media accounts and those social media accounts are how I pay my, or, you know, how I pay my bills, how I put food on the table for my kids. So I'm not interested in scamming anybody. It's just a, a layer of protection to make sure that I don't get scammed. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's what's going on. Again, if you have a collection and you want to sell it, you can uh, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, um, or Instagram. My DMS are open and I've got more collections incoming. I think I've already purchased, I've already sealed the deal with three people. I've got another box behind me. I'm going to record probably right after this. So if you guys enjoy these videos, let me know with a, a like and uh, add it to your favorites and a five star rating. What are all the old features that YouTube doesn't even have anymore? Anyways, do all the things. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you guys want to see more content like this. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.